All right, welcome students and panelists to today's executive career panel as part of Junior Achievement of New Jersey's Women's Future Leadership Academy. Uh, we are so glad that you have joined us. We have a very exciting panel uh, and we are honored to have some extremely special guests with us today and we are so glad that you are joining. But before, before we begin, we just wanted to give a shout out and a sincere words of thanks to our partners who make this fantastic program uh, available to all of us week after week. So huge thanks to our presenting sponsors, ADP, the Deloitte Foundation, the MetLife Foundation, and Sanofi, and our sponsors, Church and Dwight, Carney Bank, New Jersey Resources, Merck, CNBC, Crow, Wells Fargo, CDW, EY, Fidelity, L'Oreal, Prudential, PSE and g and Valley Bank. We thank you all so much. So students, if you are just joining us for the first time, we welcome you. And we just want to remind you that you can continue to build your leadership skills with Junior Achievement and the Women's Future Leadership Academy throughout the rest of the school year. There are many ways that you can get involved. You can earn JANJ's digital badge for career readiness. It's a micro credential that looks great on your LinkedIn profile or your resume or your college application. It's really simple. All you have to do is attend five or more sessions, complete a survey, and submit a final project. We've given out several uh, digital badges uh, so far, even this week, and we are excited to give one to you as well. It's very simple. Simply just go on our website and hit that QR code. They'll take you right to our website and give you instructions on how you can earn your badge. Also, you, be you can become a WFLA student ambassador. As an ambassador, you act as a representative of the program in your community and school. And you can get more details on the program right there on our website. And hot off the press, we are so excited to announce we are going to have in-person Women's Future Leadership Forums at our Education Center in Edison on June 4th and June 28th. So two days for you to choose from. We hope all of you will consider joining us. It's going to be a great day of inspirational speakers, breakout sessions that will help you build career skills and confidence. Uh, we'll have a networking lunch and we'll be giving out some awards. So please mark your calendars. We'd love to have you join us at our Education Center. We can finally all get together June 4th and June 28th. But without, rather, uh, without further ado, we are so excited and delighted to have a just amazing panel of women leaders here in New Jersey who have joined us today. Uh, we thank all of you for participating and we, we have a career panels. We are so delighted to have these types of career panels where we bring women together um, to really share their experiences and their leadership skills with you. And today is certainly a very exciting day. We are so honored to have commissioner of the New Jersey, uh, sorry, <laughs> commissioner of the New Jersey Department of Transportation, Diane gutierrez Schicchetti joining us. Also joining us, we have Chrissy Butis from the New Jersey Business and Industry Association. We welcome Wendy Kam Kama, managing partner from Crow, and also Vicki Sanchez from Janssen Pharmaceutical Companies of Johnson & Johnson. We welcome all of you. And we are also delighted to uh, welcome our moderator for today. Please welcome Esther. Esther is a former Junior Achievement New Jersey high school hero. Uh, a recent graduate of Rutgers University and now working with Junior Achievement full-time in our programs department. So we are excited to have Esther moderate our panel discussion today. And on that note, Esther, I will turn it over to you. Thank you, Christy, for that lovely introduction. And a welcome panelists. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight. I am so excited to be moderating today's event. And let's begin with introductions. Panelists, would you share a little bit about yourselves to the students? Your name, title, company, and a brief description. Commissioner gutierrez Cachetti, may we start with you? Of course, and I appreciate that, Esther. Thank you very much. Again, my name is Diane gutierrez Cachetti. I'm the commissioner of the New Jersey Department of Transportation. Uh, it is a wonderful job. Um, and in my job, I am responsible for the day-to-day -day operation and continued development of New Jersey's transportation infrastructure. That means the maintenance and design of improvements to our interstate highways, to our state highways, and to working with our local communities where state highways and local roads meet. 
But in addition, we also have a robust program where we provide grants to our local communities to do transportation for structure projects that have nothing to do with the state highway system. And in my spare time, I sit as chair of the New Jersey Transit Board of Directors, New Jersey Turnpike Authority, and South Jersey Transportation Authority with the goal of making sure that transportation planning done in New Jersey is done holistically with all the statewide transportation agencies working together. The real important part of my job is taking care of my staff. I have 3,200 employees at DOT and in leadership, one of the most important things you do is to make sure your folks have the tools they need to do their jobs. And the last two years have been remarkably difficult for many of our employees. And so it's very important for leadership to acknowledge that and work very hard to make sure your employees feel valued, accepted, and, and importantly, most importantly needed um, in the jobs they do every day to serve New Jerseyans. So thank you, Esther. Thank you, Commissioner. Next, we welcome Wendy Kama from Crow. Wendy, would you please introduce yourself? Absolutely, thank you. So my name is Wendy Kama, and I am the managing partner of our audit business unit at Crow LLP. Um, that is an accounting firm, and we are an accounting, consulting, and technology firm. And so um, I have been with Crow for almost 32 years, which has been very exciting with lots of different roles. Um, within my role today, uh, I focus on really the strategy of the audit piece of our business. And audit um, auditors actually sign opinions, we audit financial statements of companies. So a public company where you may want to invest in the stock of that company, it's our responsibility as auditors to make sure that the financial information is reasonable um, and accurate for you to make your decisions and to invest or for a bank to determine to make a loan to a company. So just a little background on what auditing is. So in my role, I lead over a thousand people across the country um, in the, that audit practice. And I'm very engaged in and involved in setting the strategy for the audit practice to align with the firm-wide strategy uh, for Crow LLP overall. Thank you, Wendy. Our next panelist is Victoria Sanchez from Janssen Pharmaceutical. Vicki, could you please introduce yourself? Thank you, Esther. I'm privileged to be here buying some uh, amazing women that I'm getting to hear about, as well as the students who are here. Uh, Vicki Sanchez uh, is the way I go by. I'm a senior director at Janssen Supply Chain, which is uh, part of Janssen Pharmaceuticals at Johnson & Johnson. Um, a brief description of my, the company I work for. Um, I think that the best way to kind of describe it is Johnson & Johnson is out there doing a world of well for the last 130 years. Uh, and we're very proud of that. We're very proud of the products that we put out there and the work we do um, in our communities that we are part of um, to serve. What do I get to do in my day job is uh, I'm part of the uh, arm that makes the medicines so that help people feel better. So uh, as you've heard from, from some of uh, my, my fellow presenters here in the panel, um, it's been a difficult uh, two years. Uh, and, uh, and so very proud of being part of a team that has been doing everything they can to get medicines out there to everybody in the world uh, to, to feel better. So um, I'm an electrical engineer by degree, went to school at Rice University and got, I've been getting to travel the world uh, um, uh, and uh, except for the last two years. So that was a big shift. Uh, just did my first international trip again. I went to Belgium where we were looking at, at some of the products that we make there and um, look forward to sharing with you some more about what Johnson & Johnson and what I have had a chance to do in my career. Thank you, Esther. Thank you, Vicki. Next, we welcome Chrissy Butes from New Jersey Business and Industry Association. Welcome, Chrissy. Oh, good afternoon, and thank you so much, Esther, and congratulations to you. Uh, I'm really uh, thrilled for you. And to all the students who took their time out of your busy day to join us today, 
uh, we welcome you as well. I am so, so humbled to be among so many fantastic women here this evening. I have the pleasure of serving as the Chief Government Affairs Officer at the New Jersey Business and Industry Association. And I'm sure you're wondering, what do we do at the association? Well, we represent New Jersey's business community. So from your smallest Main Street employer up to our largest corporations, they're in our membership and my role at the association is to work with a fantastic team to make sure that their message is carried forward to all of our decision makers within the state government, federal government, and our local government. And so I have the pleasure of having some of our colleagues here on the panel as members, and I have the pleasure of working with uh, Commissioner Schicchetti as well on a number of different initiatives that impact the business community. And so I am thrilled to be here. Um, and again, look forward to the questions from the students and hope that you walk away with some some great advice from my fantastic colleagues here and appreciate the opportunity to join you today. Thank you, Chrissy. I think I speak for everyone when I say this panel of women wear tons of hats <laughs> and are amazing. Thank you so much again for being here. Again, we are so honored to have you all. And I know the students are looking forward to learning a lot from you. Our first question talks about facing adversity. The path to success isn't always easy, and sometimes life can throw us unexpected challenges. Please tell us about a challenge or a setback you face and how you overcame it. Commissioner Gutierrez Gachetti, let's start with you again. Okay, thank you, Esther. So I'm gonna give you two brief examples, one that is relevant to you as students, and then one that may be relevant to you later in your career as your career progresses. So as a student, I was very excited um, when I graduated high school to be accepted to the University of Connecticut um, as an undergrad. Um, it was a big deal um, coming from New Jersey to get accepted to a state university outside of New Jersey. And it was where I really wanted to go. Um, my dad really wanted me to be an accountant. And I thought that was gonna be what I was, but I have to tell you, I hated accounting, just did. It wasn't my thing, right? It just wasn't my strong suit. Now I just do not, I love working with numbers now, but as a college student, that's not what I wanted to do. And I tried really hard for a really long time to follow that path to please my dad, who I love very much and loved his whole life. Um, so much so that I continued on to where I failed the most of the uh, my, my fifth semester, my first semester of my junior year because I literally stopped going to class because I just couldn't take it. Um, but I didn't know how to tell my dad I didn't want to be an accountant. And I had a great professor who said, this is, this is not failure. This is just a bump in the road. Um, what do you want to do? And we talked through it. He was a wonderful man. Um, I asked him, why did he become an accountant? He said, well, frankly, it was the first thing in the course catalog and it worked for me, right? So how we make decisions about what we're going to be is always very interesting. My point in telling you this story is, you know, you're going to change your mind more than once perhaps about what it is you wanna do um, for your future. Um, those are not failures, those are, that's evolution. That's you growing and learning and understanding who it is you wanna be and what you're passionate about. Um, I really was passionate most, at UConn I graduated with a business degree. My success for me academically came when I went to Rutgers as an under as a graduate student, because my passion was to negotiate labor agreements. My passion was to work inside of the employee employer relationship to help make sure that we, you know, transactions were fair, labor contracts were fair, everybody got their, their fair share. So while it didn't do a lot for my GPA in that moment um, to feel that way about accounting or to feel that way about college, um, it happened. Clearly, I recovered. Um, you know, there's a point in time when no one really asks you about your GPA anymore. It's not that that's not important to achieve success, but it also isn't something you carry around like a scarlet letter um, that, it, that somehow you can't recover from it. There are very few mistakes that we make in this life that are not we, that we can't recover from. We do that by finding good mentors, like I had my professor, um, friends and colleagues in our family. And learning to, you know, sometimes just say to people, I appreciate what you want me to be, but this is what I want to be. 
Second challenge came later in my career when I lost my job at the New Jersey Turnpike Authority uh, at the beginning of the Christie administration. Never in my million years did I think I was gonna lose that job. I had been there for so long. I was four years from retirement, um, thought everything was going along um, and it didn't. So again, what do you do? You think the whole world is looking at you knowing that something bad happened. Frankly, the whole world doesn't care. You pick yourself up, you brush yourself off, you find those people who can give you affirmation and you realize that there is life after anything. And I was able to successfully go down to Florida, run their turnpike, and then Governor Murphy brought me back to what is the pinnacle of career and trans public, public sector transportation, which is the commissioner of this department. So my point is, there's really no failure. There's just challenges and experiences and all that you can overcome with the support of women on this, women like us, the women on this call who wouldn't be here if we didn't know how important it was to be talking to all of you. So thank you, Esther. Thank you, Commissioner. I think for a lot of us, it's very innate for us to listen to our parents and make them proud, but sometimes being your most authentic self and standing up for who you are, it, it'll show them that, you know, this is what's for me and they'll come around to it. <laughs> well, and I promise you, they will love you just the same. You are always their child. They want what's best for you. And sometimes, you know, they're proud of you when you speak up and you stand up for what you believe in. You do it appropriately, they're your parents. But at the end of the day, um, I can remember my dad coming to visit me um, to, to figure out what, what was the problem. And we had a, a wonderful talk. And he said, if you don't want to be an accountant, you just had to say something, but you don't want to disappoint, right? And so in not disappointing others, don't disappoint yourself as well. Thank you again, Commissioner. Wendy, can you tell us about a challenge you had to overcome? Absolutely. But I do want to say, I love the idea of being your authentic self. You'll notice my background says we belong something I believe so much in and in, in, in our in a company in a culture that you need to be comfortable being your authentic self so love love that concept um, so when I think of um, some adversity that I faced very early on in my career like a matter of a couple of months after I started my first full-time job at a CPA firm um, I had moved four hours away from home and I was in Chicago at the time I had just rented an apartment. I had just bought a new car, just furnished you know, my apartment, started my new job. And two months later, this large accounting firm that I worked for filed bankruptcy and I had no job. And I was four hours away from home with you know, a lease to pay on my car, rent to pay, and I didn't have a job. And I literally was devastated. It was so brand new and I thought life was good. I just graduated college. And, you know, it really, it really took me, it, it took me off guard and really set me back thinking, what am I going to do? I, my family doesn't even live here and I have all these commitments now. Um, but I will tell you that the, the great thing about that story was that there were a group of my colleagues that really went out of their way to say, we have all of these young new hires that just came out of college. We have to help them find a job. So while they were also trying to find a new job with a new firm, they were taking us along with them and they were bringing us. And I was able to get a new job within a month and started at a, at a whole new company, but I only went one month without a paycheck. And I've now been there almost 32 years at, at Crow. So something that was really a challenge as someone young and new, just fresh out of school, um, but something that, you know, you have enough people around you, you get the right support and you lean on them. And they really pulled me through it and, and gave me the opportunity for a place that I just have come to love. Thank you, Wendy. I admire you acknowledging how other people can help you out of your situation as well. Not everything you have to handle by yourself. Vicki, can you tell us about a challenge or an obstacle you encountered? Uh, yes, be happy to, Esther. Um, actually, gonna, I like what Diane did, gave a student example and a, and a career example, so I will do the same. Um, my student example uh, will sound a little similar. Uh, so I'm the oldest of six, uh, and early on was told I was really great at math and science, um, and um, thought everybody was good at math and science uh, uh, there. So it, uh, and people kept saying, oh, go, you should be an engineer, or you should be a technology. Uh, and I remember going to the library and looking at what that meant and then seeing universities I could go to. 
and seeing how expensive it was. And I was thinking, well, maybe that's not what I'm going to do. But um, it kept coming back, you know, uh, counselors at school, my math teacher, my physics teacher, uh, different places. I, it was a good a good place where people kept saying you should do this. Uh, luckily, I had parents who they were really trying to say to their kids, you know, go to university, go to college, first time, uh, uh, gener you know, first generation to do that. Um, so I like what you said, Esther, it's it's really keeping your mind open and uh, and seeing what opportunities are there. So um, uh, I remember I was part of Junior Achievement uh, my senior year with Entrepreneurial and was at Deloitte was our, 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 our counselors or coaches that came in and said, so, so I remember the four or five of us that were building our company with them going, you know, how did you pay for college? And how did you pay for college? So all of us kept asking that question. Um, and I think what I remember is, I mean, it, it turned out to be a combination of some scholarship, of some of some student loans, uh, of me working while in college, uh, how I went in into. But what I loved was um, there was probably way more people that said, we'll figure out a way to do this versus being told, versus me being hearing, uh, no, you can't do that. You come from from a middle, lower middle class family. Your parents can afford this. You, you know, should be staying local. Um, uh, so, so I really um, that unexpected challenge of being invited into a space that I didn't know anything about, and then every time I would look, seeing that it was so expensive. You know, not many girls were doing it, um, but just uh, unless you know having us uh, parents who like like Diane said it doesn't your parents love you and they want you to do things uh there my parents didn't have any any advice of which career path to go they were just trying to get me into school because uh, they knew that was a better life it was a better life for me and to go through so uh my advice there is just remember to uh um to to do that and i just saw a little question here what was my what was the favorite aspect of being an electrical engineer um I think it was solving the the puzzles. So it was really hard. There's no, so I don't want to. <laughs> I'm sure any career you go to, it was really really hard. There were many times I was at university going, why did I pick this? Why did I think this was going to be great and fun? But um, there was a, a a lab where I got to build a clock with digital uh, a circuitry. And when I got that clock to work, it was like, wow, you know, the 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 journey of the puzzle of how do I make it work? Uh, and then, you know, it was with a team. But then when we got it to to work, it's like, yes, we we uh, so there. So I think the hands on, the interactive is what I like. Um, transferring that into work experience. Um, I think one of uh, the greatest setbacks that I've seen in, in the workplace uh, was um, was a little unique. It's uh, um, always felt very uh, included, um, but being a woman in engineering, uh, it's a, there's less numbers. So as you get out there and, and start going in, it, it's finding people I could connect with in, from a different perspective, from a different way, even though I, I found a lot of support. Uh, and I'd say for me, um, where I dealt with that is, is I joined employee resource groups. So in college, I was part of Society of Engineers. Uh, in, 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 when I went out and bent into the workforce, uh, I joined uh, what they call employee resource groups. So that folks that had different similar interests, uh, either it was engineering or a um, uh, uh, or women's leadership initiative is one of the initiatives we have. Uh, and I, and the big one was 30 years into my career, uh, we were told, hey, did you realize that the numbers haven't changed in STEM of how many women are in STEM? That was like about six years ago. And I was like, not not possible. I mean, I'm a data point where I made it through, became an electrical engineer. So what I did is um, I uh, I joined, J&J I, &J said, hey, you know, a lot of women that were there, leaders said we should do something. And so women in STEM 2D was formed internally and uh, and I became part of that journey and now am sparking enchantment with youth in, in this kind of in forums and saying, hey, I made it. You can, too, if you like it. And if you have passion for it, move forward. Um, so paying it forward is a way I kind of approach that uh, on that piece. So I uh, hope those uh, resonate and provide uh, uh, in, um, inspiration to, to all the students that are online today. 
Thank you, Vicki. And I'm sure we have a lot of first generation, uh, soon to be college students in the chat right now um, that really appreciate your advice and your experience that you just shared. And finally, Chrissy, can you tell us about an obstacle or a challenge you face? I Life is full of opportunities. Life is full of challenges. I have learned to certainly embrace the challenges and I will share with you how one led to one led to another. And I think it was one of the best things that that happened and one of the best life learning lessons. Many of you, perhaps as students are a bit unclear on what path to take, whether it's college, whether it's going into a specific trade. I think that's completely fine. I went to school to be uh, go into the FBI, go into law enforcement. And unfortunately, I was not accepted into an honors internship program in, in the FBI. What that led to, however, and I think this answers one of the questions in the chat, which is about how, how did you know you were in the right path, is I received an internship with the United States Senator. So the value of experiential learning on the job was critical. And so although I didn't go into the career for which I was majoring in, I found, you know, a purpose of serving. And uh, like many of my colleagues here, I am also in a male dominated profession and I, I welcome that opportunity. I see it as an opportunity. And so the challenge became I wanted to run for public office and similar to what Vicki mentioned on on the numbers, women are underrepresented in many leadership positions, whether it be running non for profits corporations and holding public office. And I really wanted to serve my community and ran for public office and ha had the pleasure of serving for a number of years, however, I also lost my reelection and lost running for mayor of my town. And that was probably the best learning experience I ever had. And so I took those lessons and have applied them into my everyday. And, and again, learned a lot about myself and became, I think, a better person for it and would do it again in a heartbeat. And so I think the value of experiential learning you know, life throws a lot of curveballs at you. So just be ready to walk through the door and don't be afraid of taking risks because if you don't take risks, you won't experience challenges. And so welcome the challenge. Awesome. Thank you so much, panelists. I like to remind the students who are watching that you can post any questions you have for the panelists in the chat room. On to our next question. The Women's Future Leadership Academy helps high school students build the skills they'll need to become successful and reach their goals. Looking back on your own education and career, what skill or skills did you develop that enabled you to come this far and accomplish so much? Let's go in the same order, but this time we will begin with Wendy. Well, thank you, Esther. This is a great question. And I'm gonna say, um, I'm gonna speak to probably a group of skill sets, but you will hear this defined, it's a hot topic, a big term, as emotional intelligence. And just to help make all of, all of you students out here understand what emotional intelligence is, I'm gonna read you the definition of that. It's the ability to understand, use, and manage your own emotions in a positive way to relieve stress, communicate effectively, empathize with others, overcome challenges and diffuse conflict. So that's a whole lot of things, right? But collectively, all of those skills, you know, are considered emotional intelligence. And kind of the five characteristics of those are having self-awareness, um, having self-regulation, motivation, really important is empathy and social skills. And I feel like, um, especially in today's environment where We've been in, in a COVID world, we've been operating remotely. We um, spend so much time in social media and Zoom like this, right? But the relationships and that ability to, to connect with people is so critical. I mean, I think you heard in all of our stories, other people supported us in times of adversity 
helped us make decisions where we've ended up in our careers. And so this whole ability to empathize with others and to understand and manage your own emotions and be positive and be motivated um, is just so critical and important no matter what you do in life. And so to me, that is probably the most important um, group of skill sets that can help you be successful in anything that you do. I love that answer. I, I talk about emotional intelligence all the time to <laughs> whoever could listen, especially the young children that's coming up. Thank you, Wendy. Vicki, what skills have helped you become successful in your career? Um, two things. One is uh, puzzle solving, uh, loving the passion of puzzle solving, no matter what comes at me, whichever way, whether it's in my personal life uh, or at work, um, is not being afraid to look at the problem and, under, and understand what the problem is, and then going and asking and being comfortable with asking anybody, you know, whether it's the top leader to, to somebody who is outside of my, of, of my company or my knowledge base to get a perspective into how to possibly solve the problem. Um, many, a, a, a one of the first opportunities that I got to really go from, I started my job, my my career in consumer products, making Kingsford charcoal, making um, uh, Hidden Ranch Valley uh, Ranch, moved into J and J doing women's health products, um, and wanted to go into making medicines, uh, which was a different group. And the most unexpected way of of clicking with with uh, the the individuals that were in the making medicine business and say, you know, can Vicky come into the into the space that was so different than peace was? Um, I asked somebody to explain how they made a, a medicine. You know, how do they make? You know, and when they explained it to me, I said, let me tell you a process. And I explain and I walked the step of a charcoal briquette. And they go, wait a minute, that, that's how we make a, a tablet. That's how we make a pill. And I go, there you go. You see, it's, a, and guess what? In one space, it's about a regulatory agency called the Food and Drug Administration. The space that I was in, the Environmental Protection Agency was, was asking similar questions and asking audits and making sure at the end of the day, both agencies were trying to make sure that whatever we were giving our consumer, our, our, the product, that we were a safe and, and to the environment, to the individual. So um, connecting the dots, that puzzle, looking at things differently, um, uh, and being able to show folks that you may have information and awareness, even though you may not have had that type of experience. So, so problem solving is a skill, feeling comfortable with that puzzle making. The other one I'll say going through my career, um, now it's called resilience. I think it was called different things as you go through. Um, it's find early and often um, where you can find your moment to be calm, a moment to reflect, to pause, whether it's to pause to celebrate, pause to mourn, pause for your stance. Um, resiliency is knowing that things are, are not gonna be easy. Sometimes it's gonna be hard in your personal life. Sometimes it's gonna be hard in your work life school life, but find a place where, you know, whether it's breathing for a minute, whether it's listening to a joke with a friend, whether it's going for a walk uh, with, a, with, with somebody or a dog with, I have a pet, so now I get to walk a bit. <laughs> and, uh, it, and there, so it's, uh, it means different. It's a different rec uh, um, definition for each and every one of us, but it's a moment to kind of pause and take back because if you can just take back and just think of what you're grateful for, what you process, you'll find out that no matter what's in front of you, whatever mountain that you're trying to climb, um, it'll be just that much easier if you take a moment to uh, recover and pause and be resilient. Thank you, Vicki. I love that you shared how curiosity plays a part in problem solving. Um, someone like me, I always think you have to be super smart. Why well, I thought you have to be super smart to problem solve. And sometimes it's just asking the questions no one else cares to ask or asking the questions you genuinely want to know because it'll, it'll lead to answers. Um, thank you for sharing that. And Chrissy, uh, would you mind sharing skills that have helped you become successful in your career? It's a great question. And what I, what I like to do is because so many great suggestions have already been given, 
I think it's important to try to boil them down so the students also could just walk away with like an action item as well from, from our conversation. And I, I would say the value of hard work and knowing your craft is key. So becoming, becoming extremely knowledgeable about what you do is important. And that comes in many forms. And I think one of the single most valuable things that has helped me in my career is to be able to develop meaningful relationships. And my network of, of colleagues who I can confide in or who give me advice on, on things to assist me with moving forward or to make a decision. And, and not only that, but to have somebody who's also your champion that speaks out on your behalf. So we'll publicly go out and say that this person is doing a fantastic job and you should consider her for this position or take a look at what she's able to be able to do. So if I had to give advice right now to our students, please don't underestimate the value of forming solid, meaningful relationships with people follow up with them, ask for their help and stay in touch with them. You could start that literally now. You can follow up with all of us offline and say, I, I would like to get your counsel. And I'm sure we would all be more than happy to spend some time with you and get to know you. And, and that's the power of having an, um, a panel such as this and what Junior Achievement provides you, that this opportunity to connect with women who are who may have experienced something you're going through and can just lend you a little bit of advice so please please network please reach out please follow up keep your word be a hard worker thank you so much chrissy for extending that invite to our students to reach out i'm sure a lot of them will follow up with you um and finally commissioner scocchetti sorry <laughs> would you so mind sharing no, my pleasure. So you've heard an awful lot about and and enjoyed listening. I enjoyed listening to to Wendy and Vicky and Chrissy talk about those things that, um, especially um, Wendy and Vicky about emotional intelligence, the importance of emotional intelligence. Um, I'll add to that list self care. Um, there are some questions coming up in the chat on how to deal with stress, and and Wendy just provided a really good answer. Um, but you do have to take care of yourself. It means that. Um, you have to find time in your day always for a little exercise, a little fresh air, read a book, um, watch a TV program, you know, just to let your mind slow down. I'm going to tell you as students, you need to learn to put your phone downs at a reasonable time in the evening, right? If you want to get good rest, which is key to any of us having a good day, it's very important that you learn to stay, step away from your cell phone at least an hour before you're ready to go to bed. It lets your mind slow down. Don't sleep with the TV on. Um, that noise, it's all out there and you're getting it in your head and you're dreaming about it and you've got to understand the absolute priority of rest. I know you wanna have a lot of fun. You wanna to go to school. You wanna be successful. You wanna do things with your friends. You can do it all. Uh, you just have to make sure you do it in a way that you take care of yourself. When my son went to college, when he started, I can remember going to parent orientation. And at that time he went to St. Joe's in Philadelphia. And the, the, the priest that was there told the kids and told us, if you will just treat school like your job and do it eight hours a day, means when you go to college, when you, you continue with your education, you do your work eight hours a day, you go to class, you do your homework, you will be successful in school because you have to dedicate the time. So for school, what I say to you is dedicate that time, step back, make sure you're getting proper rest, you're getting good nutrition, you take care of yourself, and you listen to what these other women have told you in terms of opportunities for you to develop skills that advance in your career. I'm going to talk to you about a really practical skill that in leadership drives me a little crazy. Um, writing. Good good, good, good writing skills, good grammar, good sentence structure, good subject verb uh, um, uh, conjugation. You've got to make sure that you can write a good sentence. You know what words to capitalize and what ones not to. You know how to use a comma. You know how to use it, just the, the basic you know, semicolons, colons. It sounds so silly to you today, 
but go and read professional documents. They're well-written and writing is just a basic skill. And, and we don't have enough people who write well because we've all picked this up and we text and great is now spelled G-R-8. Um, that is not how you spell great. Um, we do all this cute little stuff, but when you go into the business world, right? We're all talking about the, the good stuff you have to do, but I can promise you, if you go to work for Wendy or Vicki or Chrissy, your work product has to be good. It has to be complete. And so you want to set yourself apart, set yourself apart by really being a good writer, because writing is something you do forever. Whether you write it with a pen like I do, or you type it on your computer or on your phone, you've got to be really good at it. And then you're watching me on this call, the other thing is multitasking. So we're having a little crisis right now, a little press issue at the DOT in the governor's office. So you guys are talking and I'm working and listening with one ear. Women multiply, uh, multitask better than anybody. It's just the way we're built. And I bet all these women can tell you about any number of times they've done it. So sometimes you have to learn to manage two things at one time. It takes, it takes time to develop the skill, but you, you cannot necessarily be... Um, consecutive. Sometimes you're doing things on simultaneous paths. You have to do both well. So you've got to pay attention to what you're doing. Um, but I've got to tell you, if, if there's anything I can suggest that I really emphasize, it is that beyond the writing and, and multitasking is taking care of yourself. I know you love your phones. I know it. You got to answer every text. You got to know what everybody's doing, but the world won't come to an end if at nine o'clock at night, you put it down and you don't read it till you get up the next morning. Give yourself good, solid sleep. Uh, we don't do enough of it. And, and we, che we cheat ourselves um, by being too tired too often. Um, and that to me is just a really, really important thing to a skill to develop is, is good, good sleep and good eating habits. Wow, thank you panelists. There's a lot of gems dropping tonight and the chat is loving it. Um, the Women Future Leadership Academy is all about mentorship and role models. As a notable woman leader in the state of New Jersey, what advice would you give to the future women leaders who are joining us today? Vicki, we will start with you. You are a leader in the New Jersey biopharmaceutical industry. What advice would you give to the young women who are pursuing careers like yours? Um, the first thing I would say, because uh, I did this my whole career, is bring your authentic self. It, um, if you cannot do that, then I would challenge you that you may not be in the right culture, in the right area. Uh, so always bring your authentic self. Uh, that, and it, it kind of encompasses everything you heard from everybody, right? It's that emotional intelligence, it's being respectful to others, it's bringing your best self in. Um, one, one simple advice somebody gave me is look the part about two years before you, you, you're ready to get in there, right? So every time I was looking for my next assignment or going to uh, the next space is it's start looking and behaving and acting the part. So when you hear about the presentation, how you communicate, how you dress, how you articulate your ideas, uh, your perspectives. Um, so be confident, be comfortable with you, who you are as an individual. Um, uh, it doesn't mean it's gonna be easy. It doesn't mean you'll be popular sometimes, but at least um, uh, it's, it's what, I've worked in three different businesses and two different industries. And everybody got Vicki Sanchez, bra in authentic. Um, it, it means, you know, there's not saying don't be professional, but there is a way to do it. Um, so find individuals who will support you with that, who will drive you there um, because your, your voice, your perspective matters uh, in anything and everything you do um, as well as listening to others. So that's my uh, advice. Thank you, Vicki. Next, Chrissy. You have your finger on the pulse of New Jersey businesses and politics. What does it take to be a leader in New Jersey? I think your word matters a lot. And so if you're going to do something, please follow through. I could not agree more though with the panelists and what they said to the prior question. And, and I was also gonna stress this, but more in, in this question, the the need to 
take care of yourself is critically important and eating right and exercising, especially as you know, many of us have very sedentary jobs in the office. Um, I, I strongly encourage you to do that. I speak with women athletes very frequently and I tell them, you know, we've, I have a former athlete and we, we were made to go run six days a week. Well, after school, no one tells you to go run anymore. So, you know, you have to have that dedication to make sure your health is a priority. And if it's not, nothing else matters because you can't be your optimal self. I know a question came into the chat about how do you differentiate between hard work but overworking. I'll be honest with you, I think that is a challenge and has only become more so during the pandemic and our remote world. Uh, I think it's, you know, what you're comfortable with, what you can handle, but as the commissioner said, there has to be a point you put down the phones and shut down the laptops. And I'm even trying to take some of my own advice in that as well. And not necessarily even for the sake of me, but for the sake of my team uh, as well, who needs a break and who have a lot of other priorities as well, besides work, whether it be a family, whether it be holding a public uh, a position, whether it be coaching and giving back to the community, that's just as important. Uh, so I, I, I hope our students here are able to, you know, manage that and reach out to us if you have questions and to please take care of yourself. That is so critically important to eat healthy and to exercise. Thank you, Chrissy. I'm glad you caught that question in the chat. Commissioner Scacchetti, you were the first woman to lead the New Jersey Department of Transportation over 20 years. What advice would you share with our future women leaders, our leaders in general. Absolutely. The, the best advice that I can give you goes really back to what Esther said early on, and it's about being your authentic self. There is no doubt that the field I work in is male dominated. Um, if you come in our boardroom at any given time, if you go to New Jersey Transit, if you go to New Jersey Turnpike, very often I am the only woman in the room. But the important thing is I'm a woman. And I have a skill set that is different than men have. And that's fine. We don't need to be the same. We need to be complementary. So don't try to be somebody that you're not. Don't try to be something that you're not. Um, I think you got a lot of good advice earlier. And I think Chrissy gave you some great advice about knowing your business. The way that I'm able to walk into those rooms and to be successful is knowing my material. And and that goes a little bit to that idea of challenging yourself versus overworking. There's a really important word in the dictionary that every one of us needs to learn, including me, which is no. Um, sometimes we cannot take on additional challenges. Sometimes we cannot accept every request or invitation. Sometimes we can't be on every team. You know, we need to make sure that we, we you know, the old expression, we kind of stay in our lane. I know you all want to be successful, but success does not come in a year or three years or five years. It comes over the lifetime of your career. And the best success you'll ever have is the outcomes of the work you do. So when you work hard and you do well and you perform well, you will be known by the work you do and the output you provide, the outcomes to your customers, to your coworkers, to the leaders of your organization. But you do sometimes, if you get, you know, you, my mom used to say, the more you do, the more they ask you to do. Because if you're good at what you do and you finish things, you're like, hey, that's what's happening tonight. Hey, go ask Diane to do it. You know, she's always there. She always gets it done. But sometimes that's at a pretty huge cost to Diane. So you sometimes have to be able to step back and say, listen, I, I cannot do this for you today. I can do it for you next week, but I cannot do it for you today. So if you need it today, we're gonna to have to look for somebody else to help you. If, I, if it can wait till next week, then I'm happy to do it. That's a very, very hard thing for women to do because we're trying so hard to find our place that we don't like to turn anybody down. I have news for you. My assistant tells me all the time, you gotta say no more, you're killing yourself. Well, you know what? She's right. And I try every now and then I give myself a pat on my back when I can say no. Um, and it's not because, be places 
it's because I sometimes have to choose where I can be and be be good at what I do, be, be ready for what I do. You know, stretching yourself too thin is not, is not beneficial. So look at those things you've been asked to do, realistically assess if you're able to do them, and then make decisions about um, where you, you kind of put up this, the, 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 you know, the Heisman Trophy pose, you know, stop. I've, I've got all I can take on for right now, but if you come back to me two days, three days, seven days from now, I'm more than willing to help you. Um, and I think you'll find that you'll balance that challenging yourself to overworking yourself a little easier. And that is a lesson I am desperately trying to teach my 28 year old daughter. So we all go through it, every one of us, um, and know that you have the support of a lot of other women that will tell you um, the exact same thing. Thank you, Commissioner. That was a great follow up answer to the question that was asked about how do you know you're overworking or you're just hardworking. Um, saying no is not always easy, but being able to prioritize and let people know, like Chrissy said, um, your word matters. Hey, I can't do it now, but I can definitely get it to you by Friday. I, I love that. Thank you both. Thank you all panelists. Um, and finally, Wendy, what does it take to be a leader in the financial service industry? Wow, great question. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm going to, I'm going to go back a little bit. I think this ties a little bit to the emotional intelligence, but for me, it was really important to network with others and build relationships and really build this circle of people that, that you can trust, um, a circle of people that can lift you up, that can support you, that can mentor you, that can sponsor you, um, that can challenge you, help you to achieve whatever success you know, you see in your future. Um, but it's also really important at times to remove people from those circles. Sometimes you will find that you have friends or colleagues that you've known for a long time. And, and you may find that at some point, they're not really supporting you and they're not lifting you. They might be bringing you down. And it's just really important to understand who your circle of friends are who that kind of board of directors is, um, the group, the relationships you build and how you help each other, you need to also give back to those relationships. So I just think it's important to, to network, to build relationships and to then look for opportunities because what happens is when you build these great relationships, opportunities present themselves. And as long as you're keeping your eyes open, you never know where it may take you. It may take you somewhere completely different than you thought you were going, but it could be the best thing that ever happened to you. So, so sur surround yourself with, with really important relationships, people that can support you. But then what's also really important is to remember, remember where you came from, work really hard, be nice to others, and lift others as you climb because you need to give back as well. Wow, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, panelists. I know we all learned so much today. I have a ton of notes, just some things to name a few is practicing self-care, exercising, taking time to reflect without your phones, putting that time aside, practicing it, making it your, putting it in your daily practice of things to do, building your circle, like you said, knowing when to add to it, knowing when to remove, making those tough decisions. That could be very tough for children that, you know, seek validation from their peers. It could be extremely tough. I know I had to do that recently and it was tough for me, but it pays the cost to be the boss. And you, <laughs> you four ladies right here, hey, you're the boss. You're the bosses and I'm going to take your advice because <laughs> I, I hope to be I hope to be just as great as you one day. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And at this time, I will turn it back over to Chrissy for our closing remarks. Absolutely. And Esther, I, I echo everything that you're saying. And I certainly learned a lot from all of you. And we truly appreciate your time and your leadership with us and all the students, those who are joining us right now and those who will be uh, joining us later uh, viewing the recording. We thank you all so much. 
uh, Commissioner Diane Gutierrez Cachetti from the New Jersey Department of, of Transportation, Vicki Sanchez from Janssen and Johnson and Johnson, Wendy Kama from Crow, and Chrissy Butis from the New Jersey Business and Industry Association. We thank you. Before we go, we're just going to take a picture of everybody. So if you wouldn't mind, I'm going to want to give you uh, plenty of warning. Just uh, give me a big smile. I'm going to take a little screenshot here. All right. Um, and again, on, on behalf of all of us at Junior Achievement, we thank you all. Thank you students for your wonderful comments in the chat room. And we wish everybody a wonderful and peaceful evening. Thank you all so much. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you.